Welcome to the Fire and Earth podcast with your hosts, Jason Mefford and Kathy Gruber. Fire and Earth, giving you the keys to unlock your limitless potential. Welcome to another episode of Fire and Earth podcast. I'm your co-host, Jason Mefford. And I am Kathy Gruber, and I just got back from HypnoThoughts. Woo, which is the hypnotherapy conference I go to every year. So much fun. So great to see people. We've had so many of them on the show. Um, but one of the things, uh, I was in one of the sessions and one of the steps that this uh, instructor was talking about was sacredness and bringing sacredness into everyday life. And that was something I used to do. And I kind of fell away from it. And I, I actually thanked her after her talk. I said, you know, thank you for the reminder of that. I need to bring that back. And she looked at me like with knowing and said, bring it back. Yeah, it's like, oh, I kind of got chills. I was like, oh, yeah. So uh, we're going to talk about that today of how to bring sacredness into your everyday life, because, um, you know, some people might head to church on a weekend or you know, meditate once every once in a while, but not daily practice of something. It doesn't have to be meditation. But mm -hmm. what are you doing that's taking you out of your quote real world and bringing back that sort of otherworldly? So we're going to talk about that today. Well, and I think maybe to start with, uh, it might be kind of a good discussion, you know, that word sacred, right, of, of what that actually means, because I think for, for somebody that's religious, right, like I grew up religious, so there's kind of a specific um, connotation associated with, with sacred necessarily, but I guess, how, how would you describe or think about and use that word of what sacred actually means? means yeah that's a great question it's one of those words that's hard to describe in words right you just you, it know, is. you feel it, it sort of thing yeah. um to me sacred so like when i was wiccan we would the first thing we would do is create a circle and create sacred space and what that was was a container for things that were not of the material world it put it, it set a, an area aside where you could do things that were magical that were spiritual, that were connected universally. It sounds so woo-woo, but that's what it is. And mm -hmm. I remember, because I grew up Catholic, I hated every second of it. And I was always the one questioning everybody about things, which no one appreciated. And I remember we used to go to church Saturday night because that counted towards yeah, Sunday. Yeah, you just go to right? Saturday which, Mass instead, right? Yeah. Which never made sense to me because I'm like, but if, well, then why can't I go like Wednesday? Nope, that doesn't count. Okay, but I could go Saturday and that counts for Sunday. There was all these rules that my rational brain didn't understand. And I remember saying to my mom, so what if Saturday night you and I just like pray here? She goes, no, you have to go to church. And I don't think she understood why she was saying that. That was just what her conditioning was. Mm -hmm. But basically it was welcoming in sacred, a sacred place where everybody is of theoretically the same mind, right? That's what that church environment created. So when you have meetings with other people or gatherings with other people and you're creating and holding that container of space, to me, that's what sacredness is. Well, and I think it's it's interesting too because you kind of brought up the kind of holding space for what's not ordinary, right? Or, or maybe what we don't see. Some people call it like 3D or in our physical form or whatever. But, um, you know, like you said, I think I think it's, it's beautiful. And, and that's why you know, doing something sacred or bringing that sacredness into your life every day can look, uh, can show up in a lot of different ways, right? Because like you said, it, it can be meeting with other people where you're all kind of coming together and setting, setting an intention, creating a container where, where you can interact and connect with each other, right? It could be um, you know, you meditating and connecting with your higher self and having an intention and a container to spend time with your higher self, yeah. right? It could be, uh, you know, spending time in nature and connecting with nature, right? And again, connecting in a, a metaphysical, a spiritual, a mm -hmm. cosmic, you know, whatever, whatever you want to call it. Yep. Because you can sit and look at it and, and just look at a tree, right, with your, with your eyes. And you can describe the bark and you can describe the leaves and whatever else, right? 
Uh -huh. But if you sit there and try to, to make a sacred moment of connection with that tree, all of a sudden you'll start to feel its energy and know it's also a living, breathing being, right? And you can have a connection with something like a tree, just like you can have a connection with another person, right? Yeah. Where you're just sitting there in that in that beautiful peace yeah you know how to say this but i mean everybody that's listening you probably had a friend or known somebody where silence was just so peaceful and comfortable right like you you didn't have to say anything mm -hmm. But just being together, you could kind of feel each other, you got each other, you felt that intimacy and that connection. Yep. That's kind of what we're talking about, right? So whether it's with another person, whether it's with, you know, a higher being, whether it's with a tree, what, whether it's with yourself, right? Any of those things um, get you into kind of that sacred space. Yep. Because it gets you out of just the the physical, tangible, oh, here's my pen, you know, <laughs> sort of a thing. Well, and I love that you said out of the ordinary, because that was one of the things she said. She said, you know, you want to do something that takes you out of your normal daily routine. <clears throat> if it's sitting down for a second and lighting a candle, if that's not something you normally do, then make that that sacred moment. And it comes down to intention, though, right? If I'm like, oh, it's time to light the candle and I just do it without intention, then it's not sacred anymore. It's just that that habitual thing that I do. And while you were talking, I looked up the definite, the actual definition. Capricorn wanted to know the actual yeah. definition. Um, so the Merriam Webster or dictionary.com. The dictionary from Oxford Dictionary, please, uh, says connection with God or the gods or dedicated to a religious purpose and so deserving veneration. And now we've looked up veneration, right? Um, and <laughs> with Wikipedia, Wikipedia, I like the I like Wikipedia's definition better, actually. Um, sacred describes something that is dedicated or set apart for the service or worship of a deity. Doesn't have to be, I guess. Uh, is considered worthy of spiritual respect or devotion, or inspires awe or reverence among believers. The property yeah. is often ascribed to objects or places. So yeah, you have your sacred place, your sacred space. And when I talk to clients about meditation, um, I, you know, if you can set aside a space that is yours, um, if, whether it's a corner of your room or just a place, you know, I had a client who had like a portable altar. She was Buddhist and every place she went looked like a little makeup compact and she'd open it up and it literally had like a little Buddha statue and a little incense burn. I mean, it was like the cutest little thing. It was teeny. But she took that with her, so she would always have that space with her. Now, other people don't believe you need to have a space, that everything is sacred, and that that's just how we walk through this earth. So it's such, a, it's such an individual thing. You know, there's no one way to do this. But I do yeah. recommend we do it in some way. Yeah, and whatever ends up working for you, right? But, but kind of that veneration or res respect, right? I mean, again... It's easy, I think, for, for most people to think about it from a deity perspective, right? Like I'm praying to Jesus or whatever, right? To Buddha. But, you know, that same kind of intention and holding space can be for anything or anyone. Mm -hmm. And so I just, I, I recently just watched the, the newer Avatar movie. I think it came out last oh. year. So I'm a little slow to, to watch it, but the avatar the live action with the blue people yeah. or you mean fire yeah. or, or, okay yeah 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 so the james cameron blue mm. people avatar i think it was called way of water or something the second <laughs> I'm sorry. One. because we watched the like avatar no, the, and, and, airbender and, and, which is so uh, good and so very sacred so i didn't know which one you were talking about oh, right? the, blue, the blue people all right yes. the blue the, the the blue people but but there's a there's a there's a, a saying that every so often the characters will kind of say to each other of I see you, right? And they would, they would say it to each other, mm -hmm. but kind of also, you know, because that was a, at least in that story, you know, very connected to nature mm -hmm. group of people and the same thing of, you know, I see you animal, I see you tree, 
Uh Um, And it's that same kind of thing of, of showing that respect, holding that space, maybe sharing gratitude. I mean, I do that. I think we've talked about that all the time. I mean, I like to sit out on my porch and just tell the trees and the birds and the bunnies that I love them Mm because it's, you know, thank you for showing up today and for making me feel happy. And I, I wish, you know, wish you blessings and that you have a great day, you know, kind of thing. You know, we're walking out into the garden and going, oh my goodness, you know, thank you plants and trees for being so beautiful and bringing you this beauty, right? Uh-huh. It's it's something that doesn't take a lot of time. It doesn't necessarily require an altar or artifacts or anything to do, uh-huh. but even something as simple as that yeah. is sacred, right? Because I'm seeing that tree as another living being as something that is connected to me and I'm connected to it. Mm -hmm. And that brings the sacredness into it. Yeah, absolutely. Um, Well, and it's about that pause, right? We've talked about that where you're honoring, you know, you're taking the intentional time. mm -hmm. And also to, to, to your point about, I see you. I mean, that's what namaste means, right? The Buddha in me honors the Buddha in you it's about honoring the the humanness the sacredness of another person and this is i mean for people who are like oh, ritual stupid we do ritual all the time whether it's the way you brew your coffee or the way you get in your car and drive to work or the way you set up the breakfast in the morning you know we're surrounded by ritual even if we're not calling it that when we become conscious of it and we make it something special and out of your ordinary day um then it creates more meaning let me ask you this, Jason, what do you think the benefit is? I mean, we're talking about this, like, why do it, right? For all those people that are like, who cares if I lit a candle? What do you feel like? Because I know you have a lot of sacredness in your life, as do I. What do you feel like the benefit or what does that do for us as a human to have that sacred time, that sacred space? Yeah, so for me, one of one of the real benefits is moving myself into a place of gratitude. Okay, and so I mean, gratitude just from an energetic a frequency, a vibration, an emotional standpoint is a beautiful place to be in, right? And that's one of those places that the more you can be in, the more peace you feel, the more joy and kind of happiness you have in your life. And so, like you said, you know, we kind of go through all these somewhat rituals there we choose to either make them sacred or not sacred yep. at that point right so so i have my coffee here right and you know my water bottle is down the hall mm-hmm. but one of the little sacred practices that i have is when i'm filling up my water bottle i bless and thank my water mm-hmm. right and and again it just is connecting me to the water yep because i am grateful for water i mean come on there's a billion people in this world that don't have running water or access to clean drinking water where they live so i am very grateful that i'm one of those six or seven billion people that have access to it yeah right and and that water you know provides me with life Mm -hmm. right because without water we die And so even just, you know, like that, taking that small, small moment to express gratitude for something even like water or when you're making your coffee, Uh you know, same kind of thing. I mean, you can do it with that or I know you like tea, right? I mean, in order to make tea, you've got to have tea leaves from something and you have water, right? So you've got, you've got this, uh, you know, alchemy. Mm-hmm. of those those two different things coming together to make your tea yeah right and so i i think it's it's you know you can start bringing the sacred into your life more with a lot of those little things mm-hmm. right and and again it's not it doesn't just have to be what most people call like inanimate objects like trees or anything else right but but when i sit here and i go kathy i see you i love you you know, as a friend, I am so grateful for you for the fun that we have, mm-hmm. right? That we get to hang out like this, you know, uh, at least once a month, kind of recording these things, and we enjoy each other's company. And I learn from you, and you learn from me. 
and I, I see you and you see me and I'm grateful for you and you're grateful for me, right? Mm -hmm. That's also kind of that reciprocity of life yep. and, and the sharing back and forth, right? And so I think, I think too, the more that you can bring some of the sacred into your life, you really start spreading peace for yourself, but for other people as well, right? right. And it and it and it not only, you know, emotionally, vibrationally, energetically makes you feel good, right? But you're also helping and serving um, mm -hmm. other people as well, right? So that so that everybody's kind of feeling that along the way. Be, be, because especially, you know, like in Western societies, we really have gotten away from and have forgotten yep. this, you know, and, and I remember, you know, it's portrayed sometimes in movies or other things, but I was trying to remember, I think it was Last of the Mohicans that I was watching not too long ago. Hmm. And there was a scene in there where, you know, uh, they, they kill an elk. Uh, for food right mm -hmm. but but you know again they they shoot it and they go up to it and kind of pray over it is not necessarily the right word but kind of you know brother elk i am so grateful for your sacrifice mm -hmm. right to bring me life and to bring me you know the nutrients that i need you know i see you i am grateful and i receive you right mm -hmm. the, the, they kind of do this this little sacred act before then they would actually then you know start dressing the animal so uh -huh. that they could eat it but you know we we've gotten away from that but that used to be a regular part of life yep and i and i think it also you know because you were asking about what the the benefits are i think also it so many people feel alone in life hmm. and i think doing some of these little things like that actually helps you feel more connected yeah as well so i think i think that's another one of the um the benefits but you know like you said you you do this stuff too i mean what do you see kind of as as some of the benefits that you've gotten from doing it yeah you know a couple of things popped up as you were talking to go back to the water thing and that that you bless your water when you make your you know when you fill your bottle which is a awesome idea like I never even thought to do that <laughs> I'm going to adopt that now because I spend part of my morning filling water bottles for Eric and I um mm -hmm. are you familiar with Emoto's work Mr. Emoto yeah yeah with the the crystals yeah and the blessing water. the water and I actually <laughs> I actually got to do a whole ritual with him in Hawaii we oh, really? all of the group went there's probably about 80 of us and we went to this waterway that was so polluted and we all did a whole ritual at this little river and blessed the water. It was so fascinating. It was amazing. Now, I don't know if it did anything. We all sure felt like we were creating change, but um, it was fascinating. So anyway, for those of you who are listening and are not familiar with Emoto's work, he um, either talks to the water or puts like stickers on bottles and it basically says love and peace or love and kindness. And he has done experiments where he will um, say beautiful things to water and then flash freeze it and see what the crystals look like or say horrible things to water and flash freeze it and see what the crystals look like and the crystals look like beautiful symmetrical snowflakes for the beautiful messages and the either really nasty like heavy metal rap music which was upsetting to me because I really like hip-hop um, <laughs> or if you say Hitler or I hate you the crystals look so like just gross I mean they just they look awful Whereas if yeah, you they're, say they're, they're no longer and, kind of a sacred geometric pattern. It's, it's like a garble. Yeah. It's like a block of, of blop of just nothingness. So anyway, so he's interesting. He, unfor I, he, he passed away, I think five or six years ago. So huge loss. And he did so much work with children and water and cr fresh water to people that don't have it. So he was a great thing, but, but I think one of the things that we get from acknowledging that sacredness is it's, it ups our consciousness and to listen to somebody like um, Eckhart Tolle, you know, we have two purposes. We have an inner purpose, which is to awaken and an outer purpose, which changes on a moment to moment basis, depending on what we're doing. Our purpose right now is to record this podcast. I'm not a massage therapist. I'm not a coach. I'm not a partner. I'm not a daughter. I'm not, my purpose right now is to be with you and record this show. 
That's my purpose. Um, my purpose internally is to awaken. And the more we can identify that sacredness in everyday life, I think that allows us to awaken more. And to your point about connectivity, I think that is so key because if we acknowledge the humanity, if we acknowledge the Buddha nature, if we acknowledge the sacred in another person, we're going to treat them better. <laughs> we're not going to be dicks to everybody that we run into. If you, no. you know, and, and I, I did, I did two workshops over the weekend, facilitated them. One of them was my stress talk. They had an opening and they said, do you want to fill the spot? And I said, yeah. And I just did my stress talk. It's my pocket talk. It's so easy. But one of the things I said, we were talking about meditation and I said, you know, I don't care if you can sit for eight hours without one thought coming into your head. If then you get up off the pillow and you're an asshole to the guy at Starbucks. The point of all of this is to take it off the pillow, to take it off the mat, to take it out of the candle, take it out of the church. And I think that was one of my big problems with organized religion, at least the way I was raised in it, was the, the hypocrisy of it, of, you know, everybody comes here and prays and they're all holy. And then they go out and they do these, you know, they cut you off in the parking lot. And you're like, we just prayed together. So I think if we're truly acknowledging the sacred and we can see the sacred in another person, then we are going to respect them more we are going to be more conscious of their needs. We're going to be more awake and aware. And that's going to shift everything on this planet if we just treated each other, not how we would like to be treated, but how we all deserve to be treated in this sacred and conscious way. I think that would shift so much if we would just acknowledge that. So I think when you said connectivity, that's kind of what that brought out to me. Yeah, and what's interesting, you know, and um, that most people probably, you, you wouldn't think of it this way. So let me kind of give you, give an analogy to it as well, right? Is that I think if you talk to most people that are either religious or kind of on a spiritual path, they want to connect to source, to yeah. God, to what, whatever, whatever word people use, but they want to connect to a higher power. And so they'll sit on the mat and they'll do all these things or they'll go to church but once they like you said once they get off the mat once they get out of church a lot of times they kind of forget and they're sitting there like you know please god i want to connect with you tell me what's going on you know i want to connect i want to connect well let's say that you know there's there's somebody that you maybe as an acquaintance you don't really know them that well but you want to you want to kind of connect with them and you want to you want to understand them deeper and develop a relationship with them and let's say that this person happens to have a dog or happens to have a child. If you will take the time to connect with the dog or connect with the child, you will connect with the other person, right? Because oh. if we, and, 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 you know, again, everybody who's listening, you know, people who have dogs, you know, people who have kids. If you treat somebody's kid well, if you play with them, if you treat somebody's dog well, what ends up happening? By you doing that, you're developing a connection and a deeper relationship with the other person. And again, it's not to be manipulative and to try to you sure. know, get people to do stuff, but if it works like that, imagine why, you know, again, a lot of people are like, well, it's just a tree. Oh, that's just a dog. Well, right. that's just a whatever, right? No, it is a child. It is a part of the bigger whole. And so the more sacred, the more respect, the more love that you give to all of these things that are connected to the greater, mm -hmm. the greater is going to pay more attention to you and you're going to deepen yourself there, right? So yep. instead of trying to go and kind of beg and plead at, at, at the top of the ladder, just do the work on the bottom of the ladder and you're going to get there a lot quicker. It's so funny. That reminds me, I used to do a lot of reading and study with Carolyn Mace, M-Y-S-S. -S. I love her work. Her work with archetype and all this stuff is just so fascinating to me. And I remember she's, she's kind of, she's kind of brassy. Like she did not mince words. She could get kind of, not nat, but like she, she would get a little like bitchy during her talks. I loved it. Uh, some people found it off-putting, but um, so I think someone had either asked a question or, or it was just a common thing she heard about, you know, why am I not getting to do this important spiritual work? I want to do this important spiritual work. And, you know, why is the universe not giving me da 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 And she said, look, 
you can't even do the small shit that you need to do. I'm very paraphrasing. You know you need to go to the gym. You're not. You know you need to not eat that last donut. You're not. You know you should meditate every day. You're not. You're not doing the little things to prove that you can handle the big things. She said, why would the universe give you this giant responsibility when you haven't proven that you can meditate for five minutes a day? And I kind of went, oh, yeah. You know, everybody's waiting for this like experience. And some people just get those spontaneously, unless you're putting the work in, you know, it's like, I'm not going to show up to, to city college today and sign up for the hardest calculus class. I don't know basic math anymore. There's <laughs> no way I would be, you know, I'm still counting on my fingers and toes. There's no way I would be able to handle that class. I'm not going to go into trapeze today and say, all right, I'm going to do my triple out of lines. It's not going to freaking happen. I don't have the building blocks for that. I don't have the basis for that. And so for people who are looking for this, you know, hugely magical experience, you have to start with the basics, which is just sit in stillness for a second. And, and I love what Eckhart Tolle says. He said, if you're having trouble meditating, he said, ask yourself, I wonder what my next thought will be. And then wait, because it kind of tricks your brain where your brain just sits in silence for a second going. I don't know. I don't have a question. <laughs> Well, you don't even hear that. There's just literally silence Nothing. for a while. Yeah. It's, it's, I love that trick because there are times where even when I'm doing my I am at peace, other thoughts of the to do list is coming in and, you know, blah, 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 blah. The problem coming back from a five day trip right now, I'm behind in everything. And we sat to meditate this morning and it was. So I said, Oh, I wonder what my next thought will be. And I just waited. Quiet. And there was a good amount of stillness before the thought came in. So, so anyway, this has been fascinating. We should probably yeah, yeah. Well, and I, and I think it's you know, I mean, we can go on and on and on and on about this in other episodes, but we got to cut for today. But I think it's you know, again, it's like if 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 you're the kind of person who's like sitting on the mat or going to church and waiting for some big thing to happen, okay, it might, but it's probably not going to happen that way, because you know, like like Kathy said, I mean, for anything, if you want to lose weight. You probably got to go to the gym. You probably got to kind of watch what you eat and make sure that you're only putting good things in your body. You've got to have positive thoughts about it. You know, you've got to heal any body image issues that you mm -hmm. might have, right? I mean, there's there's little work that you have to do every day. And it doesn't take a, a whole bunch of time. I mean, for me, even, you know, like I said, my intention is to kind of do it every time I come in contact with water, even when I'm standing yeah. there peeing in the toilet, you know, I'm, I'm grateful to have indoor plumbing, my gosh, right? And, and like you said, I mean, the work that, that Dr. Moto did, it does help. Mm -hmm. you, you felt that it did because it does. Yeah. And imagine if everybody in the world just started doing some little things yep. just one or two a day for a few seconds yep imagine the change in the frequency of the whole planet and um yeah not just in your life but in the lives of everybody and in the greater universe as well so yeah the yeah. more i have seen this in my life as i have been much more conscious and and consistent uh, in doing it the last few years, I have a very different level of peace in my life mm -hmm. because of doing this. Yep. Yeah. It does bring peace. Yeah. It brings and don't, humongous peace. Don't we all want that? We need that stillness. We need that spaciousness. Yep. All right. So lovely. All right. I am Kathy Groover. I can be reached at kathygroover.com. And I'm Jason Mefford. I can be reached at jasonmefford.com. So go out this week, find some way, at least one little thing this week where you can kind of find sacredness in it and just start practicing and see where you go. We'll see you on the next episode of Fire Earth Podcast. See ya. Yeah.